This is Leonardo da Vinci's head of a young woman. Simple, graceful, expressive. Follow the gentle curves of this exquisite face. Nothing breaks their unity. They all wave together in a subtle movement, just following the confident gesture of the master. You know you're in the presence of a genius when everything feels natural, as if nothing could have been any different. But in the secrets of the atelier, the artist had to make decisions and today we can still learn from them. This video is for artists and art lovers who wish to get inspired by what was made in the past. For those who believe that art is not supposed to be reinvented every time. I know I already covered Da Vinci in a previous livestream, but in this episode I just want to analyze this drawing because to me this is one of the greatest of all times. This is learning from the masters. This drawing is about 18 by 16 centimeters. It was probably executed between 1483 and 1485 as a study for the angel Uriel for the Virgins of the Rocks. There are two versions of this painting. One, the earlier, is in the Louvre and another version is in the National Gallery in London. Both are considered to be by the artist or the artist and his studio. Why are there two different versions of the same painting if none of them is a copy? Debate is still going on on this issue, but it is thought that Leonardo first received a commission to paint it and sold the first version privately to another client and then had to do a new one to fulfill the commission. Leonardo was famous for being uh, unreliable with commissions. And oh, by the way, Isabella d'Este is still waiting for her portrait, just saying. The technique used is silver point and cerus white on prepared paper. If you don't know, silver point is an old drawing technique that was used before graphite was widely available to artists. It is not commonly used nowadays, mostly in my opinion because, unlike graphite, it can't be erased. So with silver point, every line is definitive, which says a lot about uh, da Vinci's talent. It's extremely difficult to produce an elegant drawing without the possibility to erase. Now, it doesn't mean that absolutely nothing was changed or modified in the process. Traces of uh, pentimenti can be observed along the curvature of the face. The talent of the artist was to press lightly and yet assertively so that further modifications don't ruin the overall energy of the portrait. Everything feels very natural and fluid. A silver point drawing has to be made on an abrasive surface or the metal point won't leave any trace. Originally, artists of the Renaissance used bone hash priming, often with a slight tint on a surface called uh, carta tinta. Nowadays, the bone hash preparation can be replaced effectively by universal acrylic gesso, to which marble dust can be added to make the surface even more abrasive. Not just silver can be used, by the way. Other soft metals like gold or copper can give interesting results. Silver and copper will oxidize with time and the lines will change colors very slightly. Given the fact that it's a study, there is a probability that it was left unfinished. It's impossible to know if Da Vinci intended to continue it or if he was just happy leaving it like it was. Even though there are some unfinished parts, the level of unity and variety is unparalleled to me. What's striking about this drawing is the use of line for multiple purposes, outlining, defining edges and shading. Let's talk about outlining first. You see how Da Vinci was using light pressure at first and then when the right curve was found he pressed a little bit more to make the line darker and more prevalent. The most crucial difference between silver point and graphite is that a silver point always produces lines with exactly the same width. Unless you use a wider point, uh, pressing harder will not give you a wider line, just a darker line. 
unlike graphite, which is softer and can give a wider line with more pressure. You can see how Da Vinci tried to be precise for the outline of the face, but let his hand move freely to sketch the shoulder area and the hair. This variety in the quality of the line brings tremendous focus on the main parts of the portrait and brings a great energy without unnecessary details for the secondary elements. Leonardo also used line with a great level of variety to define the edges in this head study. Only by controlling the direction of the lines, he can create an entire range of hard edges and soft edges. The lines that define hard edges are following the curvature of the object they describe. For instance, the outline of the forehead, the outside jawline, the shape of the eyes, or the outside ridge of the nose. These lines bring sharpness to the portrait. The lines that define the soft edges, like the shadows of the eye sockets, the soft transition on the interior part of the ridge of the nose, or the very soft shadow on the left cheek, all follow the same direction, perpendicular to the direction of the object they describe. This direction gives a great impression of softness and roundness. These lines form a unified structure of tiny lines of varying length and pressure. They can be very tight, like around the shadows of the face, or more loosely drawn, like in the shadows of the back. Finally, Da Vinci uses line for shading. All lines that serve this purpose follow the direction of the light source. This almost brings life to the light itself, like if it was lit by a spotlight. The shading doesn't have the same level of accomplishment all over the drawing. It is very well defined on the most important parts of the portrait, and it's a lot looser for the neck and shoulders. You can see that the shading is not entirely finished, but that the attempt in this study was to find where the shadows were the softest. This is a preparation for a painting and we know that Da Vinci focused a lot on creating soft transitions between shadow and light in his technique called sfumato. You can see how even though most shadows are soft and blurry on the main features of the face, the eyelids are surprisingly sharp. This makes the presence of the eyeball more prevalent within the eye socket and emphasizes the roundness of the eye to bring even more focus to this crucial part. This is an aesthetic choice that can be seen in many faces by Leonardo. In conclusion, this famous drawing teaches a lot about the potential of the line in art. Lines can do everything. They can be sharp or soft, they can define or shade. In a way, that's my opinion at least, this drawing is more successful than the two finished paintings it helped produce. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video, don't hesitate to like, as always, subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye everyone.